Today, we will talk about the two types of routes most commonly used in navigation, which are the Great Circle and the Rum Line. But before we go into detail with this, let's look at the concept of distance. The distance is defined as the spatial separation between two points, and there are several units of measurement on small and large scales. For example, for long distances we normally use nautical miles, statute miles, or kilometers. While for shorter distances we can use meters, feet, centimeters, or inches. Here we can see the most commonly used conversion factors between these units of measurement. Now, with this in mind, it is obvious that in aviation we are interested in flying the shortest distance between the origin and destination airports, as this will reduce flight time and fuel consumption. So let's analyze what is the shortest distance between two points on the Earth's surface. Well, as we already know, on a flat surface, the shortest route between two points is a straight line. However, since the Earth is spherical, this rule does not apply in this case. So to understand how to determine the shortest route between two points on Earth, we must first remember the concepts of great circle and small circle. A great circle is a plane on a sphere, which passing through its center, divides it into two equal parts as we can see in this example. It is important to note that we can divide the Earth in any direction, as long as it is divided into two equal parts, we will obtain a great circle. On the other hand, a small circle is a plane on a sphere which do not passes through its center, and therefore divides it into two unequal parts. So in other words, any circle on a sphere that is not a great circle will be a small circle. Here we can see some examples of great and small circles. So having understood these concepts, a great circle route, also known as orthodromic route, is an arc of great circle that joins two points on the Earth's surface. And by definition, it is the shortest route between two points on a sphere. Now, this may seem obvious if we look at this three-dimensional representation of a sphere. However, when this route is represented on a regular map, we will observe a curved line. Here for example we can see that the great circle or orthodromic route between A and B seems to be curved towards the North Pole. Now, from this perspective, it is difficult to imagine that this is the shortest route between these two points, since we are used to the fact that the most direct route is a straight line, but if we were to look at a three-dimensional representation of the Earth, we would see that it is indeed the shortest route. Now, the question is, if we draw a straight line between A and B, then what would this route be referred to as? Well, this route is known as a rum line, or loxodromic route. This route is defined as an arc of spherical helix that joins two points on the Earth's surface. It may sound complex, but what is important to note about this type of route is that it cuts all the meridians at the same angle, as we can see in this example. And remember that the angle between a meridian and the route is known as the course, so since the course is constant, this type of route is easier to follow. And as we already mentioned, when this route is represented on a regular map, we will observe a straight line. For example, here we can see the rum line between A and B, represented on this map. Now, so far we have said that on a map, great circles are represented as curved lines, while rum lines are represented as straight lines. However, this is not true in all cases, since it depends on the type of projection with which the map has been developed. For example, in a Mercator projection, where the meridians are straight lines that are parallel to each other, we can see that a great circle is represented as a curved line, since the angle between the meridians and the route is constantly changing. And on the other hand, a rum line is represented as a straight line, since it cuts all meridians with the same angle. However, if we look at a map with a polar stereographic projection, where the meridians diverge from the central point, we will see that here, a great circle is represented as a straight line, while a rum line is represented as a curved line. Let's look at more examples of this. In this case, we can see that the great circle route between Buenos Aires and Sydney is represented as a curved line that passes close to the South Pole. However, if we look at this three-dimensional representation of the Earth, 
we can see that this route makes much more sense now, since we can clearly see that it is the shortest route between these cities. The same happens with this other route between Buenos Aires and Beijing, which curves in a strange way if we look at it in a Mercator projection. However, looking at it in this 3D model, we can see that it is indeed the shortest route between these cities. So far, we have focused on the difference in distance between these two types of route, but what about the course? Well, as previously mentioned, a great circle route cuts each meridian at a different angle. In this example we can see that to follow the great circle route between Seattle and London, we must depart from Seattle with a course of 037. However, as the flight progresses, we will have to gradually increase our course until reaching London with a course of 140. This way, since to fly this route we must make constant course changes, the navigation technique is more complex, and therefore we say that this route is more difficult to follow. On the other hand, a rum line cuts all meridians at the same angle, which in other words means that the course is always the same. For example here, to fly the rum line route from Seattle to London, we just have to depart from Seattle and set course 087 until reaching London. This way, the navigation is much more simple, and therefore we say that this route is easier to follow. So with all this in mind, you might be wondering which route is better. Well, let's look at their pros and cons. The Great Circle route is shorter than the Rum Line, which means that we will save time and fuel. However, it is more difficult to follow, since we will have to make constant course changes. On the other hand, the Rum Line is longer than the Great Circle route, which means that we will spend more time and fuel. However, it is much easier to follow, since the course is always the same. This way, depending on the distance to be covered, it will be more convenient to use one or the other. For example, on long-haul flights where it is essential to save fuel and time, the Great Circle route is preferred. But, how do we solve the problem of the constant course change? Well, a solution for this is that, based on the original Great Circle route, several straight segments, which are in essence rum lines, are designed, which together come very close to the Great Circle route. This way, most of the benefits of the Great Circle route are obtained, and at the same time, the navigation is simplified. Now, on short flights, the difference between the Great Circle route and the rum line is very small, so in these cases, the rum line is preferred for ease of navigation. Now, although the ideal would always be to fly directly from the origin to the destination, in practice we will see that this almost never happens. In the case of IFR flights, the network of routes and airways determine the predefined trajectories to be followed between nav aids or waypoints. While on VFR flights, sometimes it is important to select adequate visual landmarks along the route, or to avoid certain areas with high terrain, which may make it difficult to use a direct route. And besides this, the air traffic control and the civil aviation authority of each state may establish mandatory routes or constraints that prevent direct flights for both VFR and IFR flights. I hope the information presented in this video was useful. If so, don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching.